Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't always present as the first issue that you need to look at, but the problem is, is that if you don't deal with that stuff further down the track, um, everything comes back up again. So you really need to get that stuff sorted out so that you can get everything kind of running smoothly, otherwise it all just falls in a heap. If someone has is on a ticker listing and I'm trying to do housing work with them, I can't get them housing until we get the ticker problem sorted out. If I want to help them get back into education but they have a huge debt hanging over their head, they're not going to be able to pay their school fees and carry through with their schooling until that's dealt with. I've been using the Health Check now for uh, over 12 months and I find that it actually helps identify the legal issues and uh, steps that we need to take with them. Yeah, the Legal Health Check is really useful to use when things are really busy because it allows us um, to sit and focus on the person's legal issues and to have a guided conversation around that instead of just a brief, you've got this kind of stuff going on and I don't know a lot about it and I don't have time to deal with it so we're just going to push it aside and deal with other stuff. So the form is, the, the legal health check is really useful to sit down and take a moment just to actually focus on the person's legal issues. Legal health check is helpful because client and I can take time to go through a range of um, issues there in their life, um, looking into housing, Centrelink aspects or their issues. It actually probably streamlines our work, if anything, when it comes to legal issues. Uh, what we've done is, or myself personally, is I've incorporated it into my initial intake with clients. So we can refer back to the postcard. Um, and ask those basic questions again. So it hasn't taken any additional time. If anything, it's made it easier for us. The guidelines there are just very plain and simple and it's very easy for, you know, for our clients to understand. I mean, you know, they've really got enough issues going on as it is, you know, they don't need any more um, added problems. So it's just very good to just, you know, to just hit the nail on the head, be very precise with that so they understand about one information that they need when they do go and talk to, uh, you know, the legal service. When I'm using the uh, legal health check with the refugees, the health check allows us to step them through what, uh, what the process is in a clear clear way. Usually they're very frightened and hesitant when they come through and this allows us to put them at ease through its clear language. I find it really user friendly, you know, and I'm not a lawyer, so if I can understand it, then it's, you know, it's pretty comprehensible. Uh, if a client doesn't understand, we're there doing the form with them anyway, so we can always explain it in another way that they can understand it, whether it's because of culturally they don't understand or intellectually. We're there, so it's, it's really user friendly. I think it will help the client to open up what they, you know, what their priority in what we need to do first in the legal matters. The legal health check gives me an opportunity to open up a dialogue with clients around different domains of their life. This helps make the, the issue just a smaller issue rather than have to be confronted by one large issue. So we often refer to the postcard. Uh, we have dozens of people come through the door at a time, so a few quick questions gives us all the indication that we need to refer them on to our visiting lawyers for legal help. Kim has received great assistance from a caseworker to help her build a new life after escaping a violent relationship. She has a number of legal issues that need to be resolved. So you told me yesterday that you had a lawyer for your child protection issue, but then Legal Aid said no. That was in Victoria. Unfortunately, there probably isn't anything we can do about that. Hang on. Kim has unpaid debts and she wants to see her kids. If she begins a new life without resolving either of these challenges, she could feel pressured to go back to a harmful relationship. Let's try that again with the Legal Health Check to quickly diagnose the problem areas. We're going to be using legal health check form. Some of this stuff came up yesterday already, but let's go through the form and see what else comes up. Okay. So you mentioned to me yesterday that you did have a lawyer for a child protection issue, but then legal aid said no. That was in Victoria. There is a question in here. Things might have changed for you already. It, I think it's worth asking if that's okay. So would you like to discuss any state child protection orders or concerns about you or any children? Yes. Now let's put in here that you did have a lawyer over in Victoria. You did mention Centrelink debt yesterday, that Centrelink didn't have all the information and then you left your home. Well the question here is, 
Is anyone chasing you for money, including Centrelink? I am getting letters. And do you believe you're receiving the appropriate Centrelink benefits? I'm not sure about that. Okay, well, we will connect you to lawyers who can help you with your family stuff and lawyers who can help you with Centrelink and the electricity bill. That'll be good while I'm staying here. Let's go through the legal health check. We're going to go through the different issues covered by the legal health check in more detail now. The more familiar you are with the menu, the more flexible and useful it will be in your work. If you haven't already done so, download the basic legal health check and the mini legal health check postcard now and follow along. There are different legal health checks for different types of clients, but for now we'll consider the basic version. Many clients will identify about three issues using the legal health check. It includes the legal issues your clients are most likely to experience and which will cause the biggest problems if they're not sorted out. All of the sections are just an easy ticker box with a small space to write basic details where you think it's relevant. We start with money troubles. We ask, is anyone chasing you for money? And give some examples. Most of your clients will have debts for loans from businesses like credit providers, mobile phones, electricity providers, government agencies like Centrelink, and state housing providers. Lawyers consider the debts as a whole and also explore whether each debt is lawful or unfair, whether repayment should be reduced or waived. Lawyers can challenge blacklistings, harassment by debt collectors, and threats of court and bankruptcy. Unpaid fines. In every state, vulnerable individuals have high levels of fines debts. Often they owe tens of thousands of dollars in fines. Most states offer special consideration. Some offer full waivers, some offer flexible repayment rates. But many of these options are complicated to access or the response to the client is quite automated. In some states, the consequences of unpaid fines are things like driver's licenses being revoked or even prison. It's important to raise this issue with your vulnerable clients. As in our experience, the client will not ask about it themselves. But if you ask using a legal health check, over 60% of vulnerable clients owe fines debts and want them sorted out. Housing. The questions around housing cover issues like return of bond, whether evictions have been lawful, goods that have been left behind, unpaid rent, decisions about public housing, and blacklists. Crime. Under crime we ask, are you due in court? And there's a question about outstanding warrants. It's always better for a client to turn up and for the court to know something of their life story. Duty lawyers don't always have time to learn this on the day. So seeing a lawyer early helps. We also ask clients about government decisions which impact them. Centrelink decisions, the public trustee handling their money, the adult guardian making decisions for them, and doctors administering treatment without consent. These decisions can all be reviewed to reflect the client's current circumstances. Relationships. There are questions which cover violence in relationships, who is making decisions about and living with any children, divorce, and any concerns clients might have about the way they were treated by adults in institutional settings. We have legal health checks for specific client groups too, with extra questions. The youth at risk check asks questions about work and training. The housing check adds questions about employment. The mental health check adds insurance and work claims and the refugee check asks about motor vehicle and visa issues. Placing an order. The legal health check is not a piece of paper to just give the client or another form for you to complete and forget. It's a collaboration tool. It enables an effective and supported connection to a legal service for your client. As you now understand, most of your clients need someone to explain the menu to them and diagnose that they have some legal problems. Because the client is likely to talk to you about the problem first, you need resources to do that and connect the client to lawyers. When the client sees the lawyer, it helps if the lawyer knows you are in the picture and what legal issues have already been identified. All this can happen when a legal health check is firstly completed 
and secondly, is put in the hands of a lawyer. Let's look at each of these steps in turn. Step one, completing a legal health check with your client. It starts with a chat with your client. You might connect to something the client casually mentions, or your service might have a process where you go through the legal health check with all clients at a certain point. Choose which legal health check to use, the basic one or perhaps the one for mental health or young people. Choose whether to use the whole legal health check or just the postcard. If you see a lot of clients every day, we suggest that completing a postcard legal health check with your client is best. If you can spend more time with your client, you might go through all or most of the legal health check. Think about whether you will prioritize some of the questions on the legal health check. The best results are achieved when you ask all the questions because then the client knows what else the lawyers can help with. But you can ask the questions in any order. Start with whatever will engage the client best then you just tick the boxes. Step two, find lawyers. There are many options for connecting to helpful lawyers. Decide what works for you and your client. You can look up the nearest legal service using this website and help the client to write down on their postcard or legal health check the address and contact details for that service. Here's how to use the legal service finder on the web page. Another option is to locate a legal service and phone while the client is with you to make an appointment. The best option of all is based on you having a legal health check pathway with a local legal service. This is when your agency has an arrangement with a legal service about what to do with completed legal health checks. The legal service might visit your agency to see the clients or want you to send the legal health check to them when you make the appointment. For more information about how to develop a pathway like this with a local legal service, check out this website. Step three, support the client. The more support you can offer the client to stay connected with the lawyers, the better. It will often take more than one visit and several weeks before the legal issues are sorted. The more support you can offer this process, the higher the chances of the legal problems being resolved. There are many ways to support the ongoing process. Some of these will require consent from the client, which is something the lawyers can discuss with them. Here's some ideas for support. Provide travel assistant to the appointment. Attend the appointment with the client. Agree to receive and read a copy of the letters from the lawyers or act as a mailbox. Discuss the next steps of the legal problem with the client, including scheduling any other appointments with the lawyers. Help your client find and make copies of relevant documents, such as ID, Centrelink or bank statements, rent agreements or letters of demand. Let the lawyers know you are supportive and what you can and can't assist with. So now you're fully trained to use a legal health check and sort out the sharks and the holes in the boat. Please use and share this training at your work and let us know how you go using the legal health check or if you want more information by using the contact button on this website. Yeah, I had a client at one stage who'd come to me and she um, was very concerned about a Telstra debt and she was getting phone calls. It was looking like it was going to go to a debt collector. We filled out the legal health check and she was contacted by the lawyers and eventually that was waived. And another one, I was supporting a young man whose mother had passed away um, and had a significant amount of money in a, um, in a state account, a trust account for him. And it was a lot of legal paperwork that I had no idea how to do um, to help him access that money. And the, the community lawyers were able to help us fill the forms out and speak with the, um, the estate holders and to get him access to that money, which was amazing. So. Having worked with a community member who presented in financial crisis, uh, working with volunteer lawyers, he felt very empowered through the process. Um, we were able to then assist him with some other issues that he had in his life um, regarding his mental health and his tenancy issues. Um, recent contact from that gentleman um, gave us the knowledge that he is now back in um, share custody of his children. We want to thank all the amazing volunteer community workers and clients who were interviewed and made this resource possible. Thanks for participating and enjoy the last quiz.